Instructional access to the general curriculum via the alternate academic achievement standards for students participating in SC Alt. SC Alt and alternate academic achievement standards. Alternate assessments are used to evaluate performance of students with significant cognitive disabilities who are unable to participate in general state assessments even with accommodations and the alternate assessment aligns to alternate academic achievement standards. Alternate achievement standards include grade level content with less depth, breadth, and complexity of performance expectations. Alternate assessments are based on the same content standards for the student's grade as applied to all students, but with different expectations for achievement on those content standards. This is an instructional framework to support alternate assessment. This will ensure that all students have the opportunity to be college, career, and community ready with those daily living skills, those work ready skills necessary for life after graduation. The alternate academic achievement standards align with the Gen Ed curriculum. That would mean the South Carolina College and Career Ready Standards. For students participating in alternate assessment with the most significant cognitive disabilities, this will be via the performance level descriptors, those PLDs. These are access points to the general curriculum based on the present levels of performance of the student. The students must receive differentiated activities based on their learning characteristics, teamwork building skills, age appropriate social skills, skills for identifying needs and requesting supports, that self-determination. To access the general curriculum, we need to consider a system of least prompts. We want all students to be able to independently respond to a prompt. For some students, that may mean full physical and then fading with partial physical, modeling, gesturing, verbal, instructional prompts, and then being able to respond to independently to an instructional prompt. And that is, again, system of least prompts. This is what is systematic instruction. And this will be like a puzzle piece. All of these pieces fit together to allow access to the general curriculum. And then that formative assessment along the way. What is the data that you are capturing in your instruction to inform instruction specific to the needs of the student? And then that summative assessment would be the SE Alt. As we can see, the basis of all instruction is communicative competence. All students must have a mode of communication to access the general curriculum. Communication is the basis of the instructional framework. All students communicate we know that communication is a broad term that includes many forms of output. We must understand the definition of communication in its broadest sense if we want to be able to identify communicative output in our students. In other words, we must be able to read our students who communicate in non-standard ways. It's also important that every student who or every team member that is involved with working with the student be able to understand and respond to each student's communication. So, the student's communication is recognized, acknowledged, and receives a response from others, even when the communicative behaviors are not typical. Students also need something to communicate about. Common experiences and standards-based instruction will give them that communication opportunity. So it's important to give the student the opportunity to practice and have multiple opportunities to use their mode of communication. Remember that communication is both expressive, or what we want to tell someone, and receptive, or what we understand. Students with complex communication needs often understand much more than they can express, which is why we must learn to read our students and not presume that they don't understand or underestimate their understanding of expressive attempts. We must assume confidence. We have to assume that the student is receiving the communication, that intent, receptively, even though they are not able to respond with language. 
We have to assume the student has something to communicate about and is looking for communication mode that is mutually understandable and that the student has much to share, to give to, and to learn from you and his or her classmates. If we take a look at the expressive communication inventory characteristics, the LCI, what the data is telling us that 90% of students participating in alternate assessment can communicate, therefore should have opportunity for access in the general curriculum. Symbolic language can communicate, students can verbally communicate or can write, understand those numbers, signs, braille, or language-based augmentative systems to request, initiate, and respond to questions, describe things or events, and express refusal. Intentional communication is concretely. Students can understand communication through modes such as gestures, those idiosyncratic behaviors that are used regularly such as pictures, symbols, objects, textures, points to clearly expresses a variety of intentions. And then there's that very small percentage of students with the most significant cognitive disabilities who access intentionally through pre-symbolic ways such as through objects, movement, and sound, but their mode of communication is not quite consistent. And then there's a very, very small portion of our students that participate in alt assessment who are at that awareness stage where there is no discriminatory towards objects, where they cry, there's facial expressions, changes in muscle tone, but there's no clear use of being able to communicate. So it's important that we understand this for instructional reasons and there's ways to get assistance with that, certainly with the building expertise of the speech language pathologist, OT, PT, helping to provide that low-tech accessible instructional materials. Your district office or lead staff can help, the special director, the coordinator, assistive technology contact, and there's also at the State Department Office of Special Education Services there is assistance there. So think about that as you are thinking about instruction and communication and how students can access. SC Alt, Alternate Academic Achievement Standards and PLDs. All students must have opportunity to access the general education standards. The South Carolina College and Career Ready Standards will be the performance expectations for all students. For students who participate in alternate assessment, the students will access the general curriculum through the alternate academic achievement standards that link to a functional application. Everything that is taught should have a functional application. And then those performance level descriptors, those PLDs, those entry points into the curriculum where that student is. Teach the student based on the current present level of performance. And this, of course, will align with the SE Alt summative assessment. Those PLDs are those levels that mirror the summative assessment. Level one, that foundational stage, that level two, emerging. We want our student to perhaps meet level three, met at proficiency, or level four, exceeding proficiency. If the student is meeting level four, exceeding proficiency, they're meeting the standard, and therefore perhaps the SEL may not be the appropriate assessment for the student, and the general education assessment may need to be considered. It's important to teach the big ideas. What is it that you want your student to know in capturing that formative assessment along the way? This is an example of how to collect data via the alternate academic achievement standards that aligns to the South Carolina College and Career Ready Standard. This data collection tool can be used for any standard or lesson objective. The data collection tool example includes student response codes and teacher prompting codes. The student response codes include a correct response, which would be a plus, or an incorrect response, which would be a minus. If there is no response, an NR would be recorded. 
Also, you would want to include a teacher prompting code. This would be certainly independent, which is where we want to for our students to be able to strive to. Though for some students, there may need to be a verbal prompting, gestures, teacher modeling, partial physical prompting, and for some students, full physical prompting. So this is a way that one could code. Again, this is a alternate academic achievement standard, and this is for high school. The alternate academic achievement standard for ELA in this case is to analyze the development of universal themes across literary text from different time periods, places, and or cultures. The lesson objective here is to identify the theme of the literary text. And this is just a week long example of how to collect that data. Always in teaching, one would want to have an attention getter and this is where one can code and look at those percentages correct. Of course, eventually we would want our student to be able to respond to the attention getter 100% of the time. We also need to think about that mode of the, con of the communication. What is the consistent mode of communication of the student? In this case, eye gaze is the mode of communication. For some students, we would want to begin with a, a prompt of one or a field of two. In this case, there is a field of three. So the, the way to look at this would be to consider via eye gaze and three picture symbol response options, the student will identify a theme of a read aloud. Then you would collect data across the way. In this case, for the week's data collection, 20%. And it may be one would want to go into the next week and certainly would want to because of the 20%. We want to build on that percentage to show progress. So again, this is an example that can be used for any alternate academic achievement standard and the lesson objective. Some additional resources to support instruction and the summative assessment include the SE Alt portal, which includes support guides, alternate academic achievement standards, and performance level descriptors. Some additional links to support instruction, the Sherlock Center of Disabilities, CAST UDL Book Builder, CAST Universal Design for Learning, Tar Heel Reader, a wonderful resource for adaptive books preschool to high school, American Printing House for the Blind, this is a, a salient site for those students who meet the criteria under IDEA for visual impairment, including blindness. For further technical assistance, please contact from the Office of Assessment and Standards, Roberta Turner. Roberta's information is included. And from the Office of Special Education Services, Kim Watkins. Kim's information is posted.